They'll beat the holy hell out of you. They'll beat you to, you wish to God you were dead. I'm gonna do Helter Skelter with pepper on their face. They are outlaws. I kill this dope dealer, stole some weed. They call themselves FTRA, the Freight Train Riders of America, a loosely organized gang of rail riders terrorizing people across the country. They were going to kill us. They were going to cut us up with a hatchet. The gang has flop houses throughout the Northwest. This one is in Vancouver, Washington. Law enforcement sources say Stephen Thoreau, a member of the FTRA goon squad, lives here. Three years ago, he killed a man in his backyard. Police have responded to dozens of calls involving the house. It's the same story in other cities. Gang members have also been accused of selling narcotics and guns out of a Spokane home. What's it like living next to the FTRA? We learned that they have non-bullet piercing armor, but yet they have bullets that can pierce police armor. And, and I'm thinking, you know, <laughs> That's going to like go through my house, through my car, through my kids. It doesn't matter. When, you, when you're dealing with somebody that has the, the mental capacity to want to kill a cop, what makes you think they're not going to want to kill you or your kids? Police suspect the FTRA in a series of railroad-related murders in the Northwest. In the last decade, there have been hundreds of unsolved, suspicious railroad deaths in the United States. Many are now believed to be the work of the FTRA. I think they're very dangerous. I mean, they're, uh, I've talked to uh, the biggest percentage of them. I've dealt with them, and uh, they're very dangerous. Spokane police officer Bob Grandinetti has spent a decade investigating the FTRA. Grandinetti believes there are 800 members. Many are violent criminals, including convicted rapists and killers. FTRA member Robert Silvera, alias Sidetrack, is a confessed serial killer awaiting trial in Salem. Police believe Silvera murdered at least nine people. You can still see his graffiti in Spokane. The Spokane Rail Yard is a key link in the FTRA's communication network. This is where hundreds of gang members come to find out where their associates have been and where they're going. The graffiti is often racist, and the gang uses graffiti to advertise hits on anyone believed to be a threat to the FTRA. I probably stabbed him up. <clears throat> now, you want to hear that? A lot of people out here got big mouths, too. A lot of it don't go through. <laughs> gang members usually live in camps along the rails, often drinking booze until they pass out or catch the next train. Police say the FTRA survives by begging and preying on other tramps. Gang members have also become masters of many disguises. Some use more than 50 aliases and a dozen social security numbers. This man, an FTRA associate, says he earned more than $10,000 last year using fake IDs to collect government benefits. They're scamming it, you know, huge. You got one guy with 10, 15, 20, 30 different open accounts. These guys call that double clutching because you're hitting more than one place and getting food stamps. Salem detective Mike Quakenbush is the lead investigator on the Robert Silvera case. He says Silvera and most rail riders survive by ripping off the government. They hate the government. And this is just one way to stick it to the government, you know, but what they're kind of glossing over is the fact that, you know, you and I and everyone else out here that pays taxes is putting the bill for this, you know. The crimes are rarely connected to the FTRA. There are too many names on too many trains, and few people will turn against the gang wearing the trademark urine-soaked black bandanas. But I'm not taking my flag off for nobody or no one ever. But that you know, is beginning to change. The FTRA is now getting so much attention, some longtime members no longer wear the black flags. Now the mayhem is on the move. The gang is leaving the Northwest to winter in Arizona. But the fear they inspire never goes away. So by me sitting here and talking to you people, I'm going to put myself in jeopardy right now. I can end up dead over this. In Spokane, Washington, with photographer Dean Barron, I'm Craig Cheatham, New Center 6.